Vito, what's up, man? How's it going, buddy? Uh, it's going great. I just got snaked on my own stream, which is always funny. Uh, but I had my oh, finger no. on the dump button, so I, I just threw him off within like... Somebody was trying seconds. to go, Edward, Edward! No, no, they didn't. They didn't even do that, Vito. That's the thing. I I don't know. It, they, they botched it, basically. Can you do that on Rumble? Yeah, I, I don't even know where you're streaming these days. Yeah, oh, okay. you, so you I can. can you can do that on Rumble. Fantastic. Yeah, it's hard to keep up, honestly. <laughs> But no, Rumble's my my whole base. Every day is changing. I love Rumble nice. actually, but except for the tech issues sometimes and the site's kind of clunky. But they don't really they let me do whatever I want as long as I'm not like showing naked. It seems like they're something. good for content, and that the like back end of it is kind of like yeah. wonky. That's exactly what it is. Uh, That's the same problem Dick's always talking about, where he's like, "Why doesn't this work? Why is this this way?" And I'm like, "I don't know, man." And then they had like a two week period where this. <laughs> The site was just going down every single day at the same time, <laughs> which happened to be when my show started. That that was a problem too, but because um, you're not. Well, I look at really Rumble, DDoS Rumble, but they were doing that. Yeah, go ahead. What do you call it? They, they they spend all their money, and you're like, why don't you just spend it making like a really great platform? And they're like, we gave Russell Brand ten million dollars, and you're like, I don't think that's like as important, you know. Like, I don't either. I don't know how many how many subscribers that guy converts. People go, oh, I gotta go to Rumble to watch. Like who else they have? Dan Greenwald or some shit. Yeah, Glenn like, Greenwald. Who's, who's... Yeah. Well, the thing Glenn is, Greenwald, most of these people, yeah. people are on YouTube still too, and I guess they see that as somewhat of a positive because they can be on YouTube promoting Rumble, right? Which I mean, I get that. Yeah. But without it being fully exclusive. I don't think it's as good of a deal. And then, you know, if the site doesn't fucking work, they've gotten better. I haven't seen the, as many problems recently. I, I'm, I don't want to slag them off too bad because where else am I going to go? <laughs> <laughs> Kick seems yeah, to ban me every other month. So, um, you know, I can't really rely on them. But Rumble, they've taken down a video here and there, but they don't. They just take it down, right? They don't, um, they don't really strike you or... You know, you don't yeah, really your I don't think they're in a though. position to start getting choosy. That's the problem with all these platforms is like they start being like, oh, let's start banning people and banning content. And it's like no one's even using this site, man. Like, but then I'm worried that it's going to become like YouTube where once they build it up into this big, you know, money making thing, they're going to go, OK, now we can ban all the people who got us here. So watch yeah, out for that, I guess. That's the worry. Um, also, somebody said as soon as I cut short my dunking on them somebody said that their rumble's freezing that does happen sometimes let me know how the stream's going uh there is also a backup stream on robot streamer which is truly no holds barred over there you could actually Ooh. you can broadcast anything pretty much over there uh and nudity included uh actually so if i really want to go wild wild west uh i would be on robot streamer uh so there's the backup stream just in case but uh all right so what's going on Vito. First off, okay. What's going on is I'm jealous of your weight loss, Ralph. <laughs> you destroyed me last year. It's like insanity. Well, that's about I think the there's something in... besides look, I'm a <laughs> I won't say the line, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like, I'm like the, the water must be cleaner in Mexico. They don't have these seed oils or something. Cause I've well, been trying to lose weight. I don't know, I don't know. I'm still a big fat piece of shit and I'll eat a pizza every now and again, but well, for you, it just melted off. It's crazy. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what. First off, the water is cleaner because I, I drink it out of a bottle, and uh, you don't really drink out of the tap here. Everybody drinks uh, yeah. purified water or bottled water of some sort. And, you know, I just – I'm not on the full one meal a day now. Now I kind of have maybe like two or a few snacks throughout the day and then a big meal at lunch just because I'm streaming so much. I don't want to be, you know, yeah. completely out of energy or whatever. But I – I was serious about the torta diet, the one meal a day, the intermittent fasting. Um, That's the thing. The intermittent fasting seems yeah. to be what works for a lot of people. Yeah, it and works. And what, what was your fasting period? Like, just like, well, I mean, you just had one meal. Well, and so when I it. really like slimmed down, I, yeah, I was just eating once a day. So I, and, and during some of that period, like three, four months, I wasn't, I just one meal a day, right? So it's like every 24 hours, basically. Yeah. Um, so I kind of backed off that cause it's tough, you know, it's, it's hard when you do that. Uh, but yeah, that Dude, was I don't of, know how you do that. Like, man, I want to eat all day long. Yeah, yeah. You're just hungry. Uh, and drink you a lot of water through. Yeah. Well, if you drink yeah. more water, you feel more full cigarettes too, uh, can help as well. But, uh, yeah, just drink more water. Also, I completely cut out sodas, uh, and rarely uh, have any sugar. Um, but, and maybe like once every four months or five months, I might have a Coke cause Mexican Cokes are delicious. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, cut out sodas. I don't know if you're still drinking soda or not, but 
I have any soda I have is like zero calorie at this point, but I should just drink more water on top of it. I think water just fills you up and makes you not hungry. Yeah, it does. Yeah. The more water you yeah. drink, by the way, this didn't pop through and I don't know why, but I'll add it to the tally. Uh, Jim Satala. Thank you, man. He's, he got me that link earlier actually to get on potentially criminal. Um, he says, good Jim to Satala's see you. Jim a good guy. Yeah, he really is. He says, good to see you here with the Ralph Amel Vito. Great work today on Potentially Criminal, Ethan. Would really like to see some crossovers with you, Dick, Vito, and EBS on his Trash Cast show. He's been on fire. I would enjoy that as well. Uh, 100%. Has, and, uh, has EBS come on your show yet? Yeah, he was on here a couple times in the last few months. We did a, a long interview, and then we had him on with... Um, with Sven Soffels, and that was a little disjointed because I had taken a trip to <laughs> Relapse Town. I think Sven was drunk too. Um, <laughs> but uh, so that was a little disjointed. But um, the interview I really loved. And um, well, I know he thinks off. you're hilarious because uh, when you were doing, I think it was Ralph. No, what did you do in Vegas or not Vegas? Sorry, didn't weren't you in Jersey at some point for yeah. like a show? Yeah, I did the Ralph yeah. Mania thing. Yeah. So it was Ralph Mania there. Yeah, I told Ethan about that. He's like, shit, I want to go. He almost went to Ralph Mania. That would have been so. sick. That would have been I sick. I know, but he's he's busy. He's a family yeah. get man. So Yeah, that was um away. that was a definite highlight of my career. Um, you know, some people there that uh, are not here now. Uh, but still I can I consider that a, a big highlight of my career and it went off pretty well. Um, other than the main event finish, which wasn't my idea, by the way. Because um, we were supposed <laughs> hey, to do... not every event goes perfectly. I think that's part of running a live show. Now, um, go ahead and introduce yourself. I meant to ask this. Also, I was getting a message uh, from a friend of ours. But <laughs> let me let me ask you. Um, introduce yourself to the audience, for those who don't know who you are. I feel like most do. Oh. But... Uh, well, I'm Vito Giswaldi. I, I would call myself a comedian and an entertainer. I do a great podcast with Dick Masterson called The Biggest Problem in the Universe. Uh, I do YouTube videos. I'm working on a cool little comic book and uh, just trying to have fun, just trying to make content uh, as we wait for AI to take over the world, uh, which it will, and hopefully it will be kind to us. Now, um, did you see any of Potentially Criminal Stream earlier today? No, I, I did not. Do you know who that is? I woke up like half an hour ago. Yeah, you uh, Potentially me. criminal? No, I don't know who that is, actually. He is um, a law tuber guy. And, okay, uh, I did see some clips people were posting. So you went on there today? Yeah, I went on there today, right after Null. And I got the link right before he left, and he must have heard I was coming on. I don't know. But he bolted, yes. and, and I came on right <laughs> after, right after. But you didn't see it. Yeah, somebody somebody yeah. linked me to some of some clips because people are already clipping it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's it's and, already uh, been, it's already been clipped. Um, well, Noel has a big problem with me, I guess. So he well, that's why I was his... I was going to bring yeah, that up. So um, during his appearance, he flat out said you were a pedophile, and he knew that without a doubt, and claimed evidence and he wanted uh, to kill me yeah. yeah yeah he did he did say that and he would pull the trigger and kill you uh and then he intimated that dick was a pedophile without fully saying it but he he intimated that he was maybe a pedophile. he's called dick a pedophile before for sure well he claimed that he didn't uh, on the show and then he basically yeah which is a lie he's a pedophile yeah i think that's a lie too uh because i'm pretty sure i've heard that um but uh any thoughts on null and uh his words today and in the past about you well, uh, I mean, can I say with my full heart that uh, I am not a pedophile? That I, I don't know, man. I made some like really stupid jokes, which I figured everyone would get at the time. A bunch of people were mad at me, and they're like, uh, "I'm friends with Mr. Girl, right? right? He's like kind of a weirdo and a creep." And I get it. I understand why people don't like Mr. Girl, you know. And he says some shit where I'm like, "Dude, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> like, come on." <laughs> But he's still like, you know, a buddy of mine. And, you know, I've known him. We've gotten drinks and whatever else. So, I, you know, when he did a review of that French movie, everybody started calling him a pedophile. And then I said, well, hold on. My friend's not a pedophile. Stop saying that. And they're like, that means you're a pedophile. And, I, you know, for the first, like, couple days of everyone on the, because everybody was going at Mr. Girl. It was like, yeah, they were. like some of the biggest YouTubers on the platform. And he wasn't really responding to them, but me was someone they could respond to because I was defending his honor or whatever because I'm an idiot and I'm loyal to my friends. So they said, if he's a pedophile, you all a pedophile. And at first I was like, I'm not a pedophile. Shut the fuck up. But come on, guys, you're being crazy. But then after like a couple thousand people were calling me a pedophile, I started like joking around. I was like, OK, yeah, you know what? I am a pedophile. I want to rape all your fucking kids and I hope your kids, uh, whatever. You know, and I was just trying to I've never had thousands of people call me a pedophile before, you know? 
So I probably handled it in the wrong way. And now it's been what two, two and a half, oh, I think three years since that. And people are taking like the handful of tweets where I said, like, yeah, fuck you, I'm gonna rape your kids, whatever. You know, it's all these people who are coming down on me and they're going, see, he admitted he's a pedophile. Uh, we should kill him and we should. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess sarcasm doesn't uh, translate across Twitter. And the worst part is, like, most people are going, like, well, we know they're jokes, but who would joke about that? How could he possibly joke about that? I'm like, I don't know, man. It was a, you know, like when somebody calls you racist and you go, oh, you think I'm racist? I love fucking uh, chinks and specs. Like, well, how could you call me racist? You know, like you make a joke, right? You lean into it because it's funny. So yeah. when a bunch of people, and that, that was my reaction, was like the same as calling someone a Nazi. I'm a Nazi. I only worship Hitler every Sunday. How could you call me, you know, like fucking around? I didn't realize you can't lean into the joke when it's pedophilia because then Kiwi Farms take screenshots and they ha haunt you about it for like three years. Uh, so I made some really stupid jokes. Uh, and now Noel goes, well, look, here, here's a screenshot. Vito said, yeah, I'm going to rape your fucking kid. Uh, you know, you know, so that means he's a pedophile and I'm going to kill him. And uh, my entire website, we're all going to unite to expose this pedophile. And I'm like, guys, there's actual sex criminals. <laughs> if you want to deal with, be like that fucking I fight for kids guy. He's catching actual really? pedophiles. Have you watched that guy's content? I have. Alex Rosen, yeah. Dude, some of it's crazy. There was one, like, recently where it was a guy who was, like, taking pictures of his, like, six-year-old daughter and, like, sending them to him. And I'm like, holy shit. Thank God they fucking got that guy. Um, but I think these guys, you know, I think guys like Null, they don't care about catching actual sex criminals. I think they just care about, you know, creating drama. And uh, endlessly obsessing over people they can hate. At this point, though, their their hatred of me has become so like comically over the top that sometimes I check my Kiwi Farms thread, and they're just like making shit up. I'm I sure you so. deal with this all the yes, time, yes, every single day, literally. Dude, okay, it's a bunch <laughs> of autistic kids, and one of them will make, and he knows he's making something up, but he knows nobody on Kiwi Farms cares to actually fact check anything. So you can just basically take. Like, uh, somebody made a piece of fan art for my comic the other day. Uh, I'm having a feud with this guy, Eric July, who also makes comics. Yeah. And they're all, Kiwi Farms thinks it's the worst thing in the world. How could I hurt a black man's business? So some fan drew my comic character fighting Eric July. Okay? This was a piece of fan art that someone sent to me for free. They just said, hey, I drew this. It's funny. I said, oh, that's funny. I retweeted it. Kiwi Farms for the last day has been going, Vito paid a guy hundreds of dollars <laughs> to draw this image of his character just to own Eric July. And look, look at the anatomy. The anatomy of the picture is all wrong. Vito doesn't even know good art. And there's a and, and there's a misspelling on it. Vito doesn't know how to spell. And I'm like, guys, it's a piece of fun. Deal with it. Like, like they're, they're just attacking any little thing about me. Same with Null. Like, Null, uh, a copy of my old comic book script leaked. And I he's like, that. oh, Vito... Dude, did you see what he was complaining about? The reference material? Reference material. He said he sent... <laughs> the script has little pictures in it that I've drawn, you know, like off Google Images, where I go, okay, I want... She's a diner and a waitress. This is the outfit I want her to be wearing in the comic book. Please draw it like this. And Noel's actual critique, which gets retweeted like hundreds of times by these guys who think they're owning me, is Vito can't even write because he had to provide pictures to his artist. He couldn't just describe a diner uniform. And I'm like, no, there. if you search diner uniform on Google, there's like 50 to 100 different variations of a possible diner, diner uniform. I had a very specific one I wanted him to draw, so I provided him with photo reference material. That doesn't make me a bad writer. <laughs> And he's also complaining. He's like, and that's unlicensed. He doesn't own that image, so he can't even send it to that guy. And I'm You're like, I have no it. fucking idea. Well, first no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is my artist. A picture of an X-Wing, and I say, draw it kind of like an X-Wing, but obviously not an X-Wing. That's not against the law, you know? You're like, you can take copyrighted shit and be like, I want this style. I want, you know, kind of look like this. Uh, it's my understanding it's that's crazy. a pretty common practice, uh, too, as well, right? Like, I don't think that that's... Reference material for yeah. artists? Okay, uh, responding to my thread, I said, am I crazy? Doesn't everyone do this? And there's a guy, uh, Mark Brooks, who is a current DC and Marvel uh, cover artist uh, and writer, or uh, artist. And he said, literally every artist I work, or every writer I work with in comics now sends me reference material. He's like, there's not a single one that doesn't send you pictures to say, here's the mood I want. Here's, you know, what the room should look like. Here's, you know, kind of what I want her hairstyle to be. 
Like, obviously you do that. If you have a picture in mind, that's how movies get made. Like, you know, now when you make a movie, you you actually, you'll make a trailer, like a fake trailer to pitch the movie. I saw a like a pitch for a Casey Jones movie from TMNT. And they'll just take like a scene from Fight Club. They'll take a scene from, you know, uh, Old Boy. And they'll just kind of string it together and make a fake uh, trailer for this Casey Jones movie to give you an idea of the feel and the mood, like to communicate what they're thinking of. Like, this is just how any entertainment or media business works now. And Noel's whipping all these guys into a frenzy. They're all going, yeah, yeah, Vito should get nailed to the wall for uh, posting that Simpsons picture without <laughs> permission by sending it to his artist. Also, uh, I'll read this super chat in a second, both of them. Uh, and they pop through, but the TTS isn't popping through for some reason. Uh, let me, so he, he, he did all that. And then he put out a theory that you and Dick, by the way, this is just your project as far as I know. Now I know he prom helps promote yes. it and stuff, but like, I don't think he has any creative control over the project at all. He has no creative right, control. That's what I'm saying. That's sure. um, so <laughs> he said, I believe that Vito and Dick are putting out a shitty comic on purpose as a joke, basically, to try to rip yeah. people off. And then he said, it's like, springtime with hitler by the way that's not the title it's springtime <laughs> for hitler it's one of the most famous you know bits of <laughs> yeah, from the producers how obvious. the fuck do you fuck up one of the most famous <laughs> titles of all time it's springtime so for he thinks hitler. i'm running a producers he but, thinks i am yeah, yeah that, it this makes is a work like you're, that you're working people just to show them that you know you guys can just rip off anybody like eric july did or whatever i don't know that that's your your idea of of comedy yeah. uh and he frequently talks about shit that he has no clue about and then tries to act like an expert like springtime for hitler right uh and you know reference material and he ends up yeah. just looking like an idiot to everybody except the Kiwi Farms types, right? Because they're idi idiots too when it comes to this, or they just don't care, right? And they're just trying to fuck with somebody anyway. Um, but I think though it's it's reaching a level of like so desperately wrong that I think it's genuinely becoming embarrassing for Null. I think for a long time he's gotten away with this idea where he can just like make shit up and uh, everyone will just go along with it on Kiwi Farms. Like for instance, part of his thing, he said Vito, you know, spent all this time uh, trying to locate 3D assets for this other guy's book. He spent years on it. And every response was, Vito had nothing to do with that. And also, it was like a period of like a month that some people fucked around. I don't know. It's a complicated situation to explain. But he's just making shit up. Like, there's a part at the end of my book where, uh, you know, a character ends up naked and another character is on top of her and someone comes along. He's like, ah, I'm a rapist, you know? Yeah. He's going, oh, that's Vito referencing uh, the pedophile allegations against him, that he was unfairly accused of pedophilia the way this character is being unfairly accused of rape. And I'm like, bro, it's just like an old anime joke. It's like a trope, honestly. It's just kind of funny. It has nothing. It, he just says crazy fucking things. Uh, I think Null is genuinely a profoundly... He's probably smart in like a technical way in that he can like program shit, but in a like autistic understands the world type of way, he is completely uh, devoid of, he has not had any meaningful real human interaction in probably a decade. He is completely detached from the real world. And what happens is when you're one of these guys who lives online chronically and you never talk to real people, you don't go out to drinks for friends because you don't have any, you don't fall asleep with a woman by your side because you've never touched one, you start to become fucking crazy. And that's what we're seeing from Null. You see conspiracies in everything. Because uh, I guess you kind of need to explain why your life is such a train wreck. And the best way to explain it away is to say, oh, there's a god in the machine who's, uh, you know, controlling all of this. The, the deck was always stacked against me, you know, because there's all these machinations going around around me. And only I can see through the pierce the veil and uh, see what's going on. So he has to explain away me making a comic book because I had a cool story I wanted to tell and I thought it would like be awesome. Like for the longest time, I've just wanted to make uh, art and I'm very happy to do it. He has to explain that away as a secret plot to make a bad comic right. book along with Dick Masterson because we want $80,000 so bad, which is going to change our lives. $80,000 split between two guys. I can't believe it. We really wanted $80,000. So we had to make a fake bad comic book spend as little money on it and effort on it as possible and, and grift our audience who we, we love our audience. Why would we want to, we, we love that they love the show. Why would we fuck with them and sell them bad merchandise? Um, no, I'm just making a comment cause I want to, <laughs> me and Dick don't sit down and plot 
little plans. Like, ooh, I bet we could rip off the audience this way because we hate them so much. And we're we're gonna make a bad comic book. And then we'll uh, no, I just made a comic. It's it. Uh, I get that you don't like the script, the first draft of the script that you that you found leaked or whatever else, but there are no machinate you see the he sees these machinations everywhere it's the same with the pedophile stuff he goes oh the only reason Vito ever made those jokes on twitter is because he's working for some secret pedophile cabal that's trying to normalize these kind of jokes once those jokes are okay then we can actually rape children in the public square i'm like no i i i got trolled and i tried to troll back and i was not very skillful at it that's it that's the extent of it well i saw first off you're exactly right with everything you said about him right there second off I saw that happen live on Twitter when you were trolling those guys back. And I knew it was yeah. a mistake, I'll be honest, but I've done some things people knew were mistakes too. Um, but I saw him dogpiling you and you know, you didn't, you're just like, no, I'm not a pedophile. No, whatever. Fuck off. And then finally you're like, oh yeah, I am. I'm coming for your kids. You fucker or whatever. And you, you did a few responses like that. And I saw it. I knew yeah. it was a joke, but I also know how these fuckers are. Right? Shit, I've said as a joke, um, they've tried to... It's repeated forever. Yeah, for yeah. Because they have nothing yes. else to do. Yes. They have nothing else to do. Like, that's the problem. Me and you are victims of losers who yes. will never achieve anything in their own lives. So the only thing they can do is try to construct these crazy narratives around other successful people because they're like, well, if I can't succeed, at least I can drag down other people who I don't want to uh, succeed. And they'll do it endlessly. They'll do it till the day they die. And when the day they die and they don't have a woman by their side and they got no friends, and they go, huh, I spent 40 years of my life on Twitter uh, calling a fat guy a pedophile. Why am I so miserable? Well, they, How come I can't get a good job? Why am I, you know, you're like, because you're wasting your time on bullshit. Well, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, a lot of them don't have anything better to do. Uh, and you know, it's, they have no lives. it's pathetic, yeah. honestly. And it's like, what are you, and again, I, I read my stuff every once in a while and there's all this, I call it fanfic farms. I'm the one who made up that title. Cause that's what it is. It's fanfic it is farms correct. and you know, they'll mix in some real information too, but they have their own lore that has no bearing in reality. And all these stories that don't make any sense, they start writing fan fiction about my childhood and all this other just bullshit that never even happened. And they do it to me. They've done it to you. They do it to Dick Masterson. Rakeda is their latest big target. Uh, and you, yeah, you go and look at his thread. No yeah, and it's like, wh I talked about this with the lawyer today, potentially criminal. I'm being nice. I won't insult him because he was nice to me today, even after I had insulted him before. And, yeah. and, you know, you, you go through and I talked to him today. And I was like, what are they really that mad about? Like, this is so out of proportion for what they're, you know, accusing Nick of even, right? Like, oh, he drinks too much or he does this or that. I'm like, okay, well, why is his page growing by 10 pages a day? You know, his thread growing by 10 pages a day. Like, what is even happening right now? It's clearly I'll tell you, people I'll trying tell you to destroy him for sport. Uh, and they don't even get paid well, for it. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, human beings, I think, uh, from our inception, uh, we are we need hate in some yeah. form. OK, I think in the tribes, you know, well, one tribe would have access to the water and you go, I hate that other fucking tribe. Let's kill that tribe. Let's take their water. Let's take their women, whatever else. OK. And for a long time, hate was, you know, easy to find because it used to be you know, OK. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm really racist. I hate black people. And it's like, oh, cool. You can just hate black people. And then you get out of your system or, you know, I hate Jews or I hate uh, whatever. Now we're, we're running out of things that it is socially acceptable to hate, right? Uh, you know, we, we're trying to conquer racism. We're trying to conquer sexism. Yes, you can say, oh, I hate women, but you can't really hate women. You know, you'll get in trouble. You'll lose your job. So instead of just, you know, having uh, the, the few targets left are, again, pedophiles. Easiest thing in the world. Everybody hates pedophiles. Easiest thing in the world. And if you can find a guy who's in a position like me, who's like kind of a public figure who's out there and you can call him a pedophile whenever you want, that's awesome. That you can call him a pedophile all fucking day and get all that hate out of your system. Or a guy like Ralph, who, you know, you're a bombastic radio personality. You can hate on Ralph. Oh, Ralph's a drunk, and Ralph did this, and blah, 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 blah. Okay? Same with Nick Ricada. Nick Ricada, a guy who, what does he do? He goes on a stream, talks about court cases, and drinks liquor. And what what is, what is the attack? They're like, oh, he's a he's a degenerate. Uh, for He likes sex. He likes drinking. I mean, it's just, we talked about it on Biggest Problem. It was hilarious to see Worski and PPP try to lecture Nick Ricada <laughs> about self-control. 
You have a coke fiend and a man who weighs the size of a planet being like, I just don't know why you can't exercise self-control. I don't know why you can't. Yeah, I know. Why can't he exercise self-control? He just needs a little more control. And you're like, what the fuck? Nick Ricada is clearly living a better life than Worski in PvP. He has a wife. He has kids. He has a successful channel. He is uh, re respected in his work. Like, and I guess you just need to tear somebody down. But, like, for the love of God, all you people on Kiwi Farms, look around you. What is so great about your life? Do you think Nick Ricada would trade his life for yours because you're such, you're living the best life, you're living a better life than him, and you're in a position to lecture him about what he's doing? It makes no fucking sense. It makes none. And it's so, like I said earlier to the, and I kind of, you know, pulled up on him, I guess you could say. Uh, and, you yeah. know, I was had the counterpoint because this is a guy Ricada put on the map. Now he kind of was a little, you know, he backed down from some of the things he had said. Like, well, I was just joking around. I still like Nick and wish him the best or this and that. And I'm like, well, you know, you kind of jumped on this hate Ricada train. And like, what is really the, like, what's what the did real he do? violation what did here? He do? Right. What did he do? I, what did he do? I don't get it. Anytime anyone tells me, they're like, uh, something about, Dildos? I, I don't even remember. He, he's friends. With, yeah, yeah. He's friends with that black guy, and that black guy one time went on a date with a girl to a BDSM dungeon or something. Yeah, you know that I, story. Yeah, Drex told. And I'm like, well, that's not like that. Nick. Yeah, if you yeah. got a problem with Drexel, take it up with Drexel. I don't know. That's the other thing. It's this constant uh, guilt by association, and they're gonna do it to you. They're gonna sure. go, oh, see, Ralph had Vito on. They're already doing that, it. It's the same with me. Yeah. Vito, you're friends with Mr. Girl. You're a pedophile. Ralph, you're friends with Vito. You're a pedophile. Uh, Nick, you're friends with Ralph. You're a pedophile. It's this like fucking stupid circle of bullshit. This constant guilt by association. I think, but I, here's the thing, Ralph. I think we're finally winning. I think people are realizing that these people are like just fucking brain poisoned. Like at one point in time, uh, I don't know if you saw last week, uh, Warski and PPP were like, we're going to do the big veto is a pedophile stream. Okay, and there would there would have been a point in time where I would have gone, oh my god, uh, this is gonna bury me. They're gonna you know tell their audience that I'm a, a pedophile and they're gonna make up horrible things about me. And I couldn't believe the. I was like, that'll be so stupid. Like, what what are they gonna say? And then of course it was exactly what I said. They went, well, Vito, uh, when he worked as a video game reviewer for uh, Destructoid.com, a reputable video game website, he reviewed uh, lolly pedophile sex games for this website. I said, really? What video game was that? And they're like, uh, Otomedius for the Xbox 360. I'm like, oh, that space shooter that's rated T for Teen? That's a lolly sex game now? The one about spaceship, uh, spaceships dr uh, driven by ladies with big fucking titties? Those are children, you're telling me? That lady with huge fat tits? Shut the fuck up! Like, everybody's seeing through it now. Like, they have their, their uh, extreme hangers on. That need to, uh, you know, believe everything. Because, again, they just need something to hate. It doesn't right. matter. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you say. They just need something to hate, and you're an easy target. Uh, but I think anybody with a brain in their head, I see more and more people, I get more and more DMs, and they go, Vito, I, you know, everybody was telling me you're a pedophile. And then I, I looked at your Kiwi Farms thread, and I said, wait, what What did he do? What? I made a couple jokes on Twitter three years ago. Uh, I, think, I think they're losing the war on, you know, wanting to just hate everybody without reason and there's much better targets they can pick again there are actual pedophiles you can hate go hate that why do you hate nick ricada you know why don't you hate a fucking the politician that makes it so you can't afford to buy a house in this country like god pick a better target for once i agree uh and i do think a lot of people are seeing through of course they got their people they'll, they'll always be there um and the people who don't look into it enough right and they just follow along with whatever that mob is saying but that's always going to be a thing uh but i think a lot of people are seeing through it uh and you know i i've seen it with you you're killing it honestly uh on the biggest problem in the universe your comic book you know you funded that and then some uh and if their attacks worked you know, your shit wouldn't be working. Now, let me let me read these super chats out because they did send me money for these. Yeah. So, uh, there was a couple here. Daniel Larson Stan says, Vito, how much do you weigh in right now? Also, what's your opinion on booty treasure? I currently weigh, I checked. Well, my scale is like fucked. So I don't know, but it said 291. So I've lost about 20 pounds, which is not as good as it should be. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm amping up the exercise routine. I did like an hour and a half of cardio yesterday because I'm like, I just got to lose this weight. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to start seeing better results soon. 
Well, uh, Vito's you. booty on. Oh, go ahead, yeah, finish, go ahead. No, finish your thought, and then I'll get my thought. Sorry. Well, I was gonna say Vito's booty is our very uh, everyone loves Dick segment where he taunts me with toys to make me get on a scale <laughs> at the end of a Biggest Problem episode, and uh, <laughs> everyone loves it. I get it. Like I kind of get it. I don't totally get it. But uh, yes, if you want to troll me by sending stupid, because they they tried to motivate me with money, and I'm like, I don't need money, and they're like, what if we send on this rare magic card? I'm like, oh, I do want that though. <laughs> So, genius <laughs> i mean you, you can see it. my my room is a bunch of nerd garbage i saw do? that was that gta 2 uh arcade cabinet that you yeah had? that uh or like a demo a, cabinet one of the, yeah right it's one of the like ps2 kiosks yeah. they used to have yeah, in yeah. stores I, I got a great deal on that it was like 400 bucks off a guy and a ps2 yeah, normally sick. with like with the modern and everything is like 200 so yeah that was sick I yeah i gotta i think i gotta replace the fan on it so it runs a little bit cooler but yeah, uh, I got to figure out where to put it too. I have no room left for it. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I was wondering where the room was going, but uh, yeah, I just happened. Uh, I just happened I to see that place. actually uh, on Twitter. All right, here goes North thirty four thirty four, good supporter. Now it might be a little critical. I can't. Let me read it though. He says, "Vito, do you stand That's by your fine. Vito? Do you stand by your pedo position from a couple of years back? Because that was because that was a mess up, and they shouldn't be. Wait, wait. Because I wait, wait. It's a little. The syntax is a little. Because I that that thought that that was messed up i think is what he meant but and they shouldn't be given any sympathy just the wall sorry ralph if that comment isn't okay no it's fine you can send in whatever um i think that might be where you said that they should like get some should get treatment or whatever uh um, yeah i mean look i have a very basic bitch stance of like i get again i get the hate like yeah it's the worst fucking thing you can possibly do but you have to hope that there's some out there that haven't harmed a child and you can get them into treatment and i don't know man i'm just a guy who if you tell me that some human beings are fundamentally broken and can never be fixed, I'm like, wow, that's the most depressing thing I can think of. Like a kid's born and he's just destined to become a pedophile and there's nothing you can do and you can never change it. I'm like, ah, I just can't subscribe to that. Like I want to get that kid help and treatment and hopefully fix whatever's wrong in his head that makes him want to hurt people. Same with like serial killer. You know, I think Dick makes a good point. Like school shooters, people always talk about, oh, if only you know, he had a supportive community and a better family and whatever else he wouldn't have wanted to go and kill all those people. Uh, so yeah, there's just a part of me that's like, look, um, I just want people to be able to hopefully get help for whatever's wrong. Uh, I'm not a guy who sits around going, well, we'd just be, we'd be better off if we just killed them all. And I'm like, I don't think you can kill them all. I don't think you know which ones of them there are, you know, I think we need a better solution. Well, that second part problem. is the problem. You don't know. Who's a pedophile. Yeah, uh, you don't know. Like, it's fun to say, hey, let's just no, all of them. He knows you're, like, you're a pedophile. When no, exactly. 100%. 100% he literally just, <laughs> I, I, you know, I won't say so him because I would just give him what he wants. But, like, it's literally just straight libel or slander, I guess, in this case, since he spoke it. Um, there's, It was just full slander with no... Just 100% yeah. pedophile. It wasn't a throwaway tweet. It wasn't he, like he went into detail about how he would kill you. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't see how he reaches that conclusion. I don't even know that he actually believes that or not. But um, I know he doesn't believe it anymore because uh, I know he knows he's like just posturing. Like right. he's basically admitted it on, on one occasion. I should have clipped it where he's basically like, look, you know, Vito's made jokes. I don't know he's actually a pedophile, but, you know, uh, he probably is. And I'm like, okay, fine. Well, see, that's Whatever a different statement. Uh, if you say that, right. uh, and I don't, I don't know. I just watched that with disbelief. I wanted to get on while he was still on there, but I was getting my shit set up. It was right before I went on air, but I it wasn't. It was like an hour before I went on air, so I didn't have all the cameras and everything on. Is Noel afraid of confrontation? Does Noel not ever like engage with anybody? Actually, he just like snipes not very at people. Often. Not not hostile. Yeah, I, I only ever see him on with like you know people who are friendly to him yeah. and won't push back. Where he can again, he goes on that lie guy stream and he goes, "Yeah, this, 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 this." And Ralph's like, "Okay, can I come on and talk to you about it?" Oh, I gotta go. Yeah, like it seems like that's the only place he's comfortable. Again, like this whole thing about him trying to like rip on my comic and not understanding anything about how comics are made. Like we ripped on him on our podcast about it because he's a fucking idiot. And then he like he went on his podcast. He's like, "I can't believe uh, if you know Dick, you know." spent 25 minutes making fun of me just because I got like one little thing wrong. No, you didn't get one little thing wrong. You got every single thing wrong. He's like, I wonder how many minutes they're going to do on this. You know, and I'm like, oh, we're definitely going to do another 30 minutes on what a fucking retard you are. Like, we're going to milk you like a cow. You are the lol cow now. No, 
Well, he you always no has been, Vito. Talking about. That's the thing. He, he always, always has, has been. been yes. But because he has control over the other, uh, over yes. the low cow. It's a troll shield off ground. is what it is. That's what Kiwi yes. Farms is. Just to protect. The, I mean, look at his record. I went over Dude, myself. How <laughs> can he talk about sweeping it up in Janny's when he controls the board where he cannot be criticized? Okay. There are people who are trying to say, well, I think Noel got this wrong, but they can't say it because the word they got banned, or everyone's just gonna dogpile him into the ground, you know. So, uh, but he's he's learning that Kiwi Farms does not have as much power as maybe they once did. Maybe at one point, people actually gave a shit about Kiwi Farms. They're like, "Oh my god, did you read that Kiwi Gar Farms? Uh, that guy's Kiwi Farms thread." I've seen people get linked to my Kiwi Farms thread. And they go, I don't believe any of this because I know what Kiwi Farms is and I know that you guys just make shit up. And they do make shit up. For instance, uh, they went back, uh, Ralph, they found an archive of my blog from high school, okay? <laughs> 20 years old, my high school blog. And on my blog, I had one post where I said, man, something's wrong with fucking Japanese people. I love the movie, The Iron Giant. What a great movie. And these sick Japanese fucks, look what they did. And I posted it was a cover of a uh, of an Iron Giant comic where the mom was like naked hugging the sun, but I had like censored it out. I'm like, how could you take this beloved piece of children entertainment and turn it into pornography? What the fuck is wrong with Japanese people? And I even censored it to make sure, you know, I'm not posting anything illegal. And you know how Kiwi Farm summarizes that that post? They said Vito draws Shota pornography. Well, that used to I be said, Josh's favorite. What are you, I don't know if you knew that. What are you uh, talking? Yeah, he was. He yes. was in the show to Cat Boys. Yes. I said, first of all, I obviously didn't draw it. Okay. Second of all, I'm on there like ripping on it, saying like, this is disgusting. What the fuck's wrong with Japan? And they're saying, oh, Vito, Vito distributed Shoda. He was a Shoda distributor, they say. It says, it's like the title <laughs> of my thread, Vito Giswaldi, known Shoda distributor based on a joke I made when I was 17 years old. 20 years ago in high school, I made one joke about Iron Giant porn I found randomly on the internet, and I am now a Shoda distributor, according to Kiwi Farms. That's fucking crazy. I can't take it. That's why people are like, aren't you pissed that you have a thread? I'm like, no, it's hilarious. These people are brain dead. Like, uh, anybody who reads this and goes, yeah, yeah, that guy is a, he's a child pornography distributor. I go, okay, whatever you want to say. I, I can't convince you otherwise if that if you're going to go with that narrative. Well, and, and uh, you brought up a couple points, and I'm going to read these Super Chats next. If you got any more, send them in. Uh, if you got a question for Vito. Um, you, you brought up a great point about Noel, Josh, whatever you want to call the faggot, just completely gets almost every single topic wrong. Uh, and it could be something small, but often it's like a major point, right? Like a major part of whatever he's trying to say. It's just completely wrong, completely misunderstood, or just like just like stupid wrong too. Uh, and he does this all the time with almost every single fucking topic. And I don't know if it's because he just doesn't do any research whatsoever or he's just maliciously lying. Uh, I've talked about it. It's almost like he has some kind of disorder, like how often he's wrong. And he seems to believe it, right? Like um, in some of these cases. He genuinely believes yes. my comic is a secret plot for me and Dick Masterson to like, yes. grift off our audience. No, wouldn't it make more sense for you and me to make a good comic? Because then right. I can make like more make issues more and, and keep making money. Making money. Yeah. <laughs> what business? What? Uh, I know you saw the producers. You clearly didn't understand it because you don't remember the actual name of the movies they were making or the play yes, or whatever. Yes. But uh, if you make something good uh, at the beginning of the movie, he's trying to make good plays because that's also a much better way to make uh, money. It's only after failing a number of times that he stumbles upon this grip. I think I'm going to try and make a good thing first. And then maybe if I fuck up a bunch of times, maybe I'll come up with an insane plan to uh, get a tax rebate on a bad uh, comic Does he know book. what happens to the producers? I won't spoil it uh, for anyone, but you maybe can put <laughs> two and two together what actually happens with Springtime for Hitler. Now, right. uh, now let me read these out. Ada Wolf says, Vito is great, and I used to really hate him. He says, back super killer and got the enemy weapon game with EXP2. Uh, looking forward oh, yeah. to playing it. Very cool there. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, North 3434, 34, 34, easy for me to say, says, no, Adel Wolf, I still hate him. Friends with Mr. Girl, what the fuck? That says everything. So I'll I'll let you, you know Mr. Girl. Uh, somebody told me since high school. I don't know if that's true or not, but a long time, right? Um, yeah, people always um, get confused on that. Like, the people say that we were friends in high school. What it actually was, was we went to the same high school. He was a senior when I was a freshman. Oh, you weren't friends then. So I never, I never knew him in high school, but he was known in school as this guy who would like print these insane newsletters 
being like, oh, you don't have to respect the other female students. They don't have a brain. Uh, they're basically just fuck meat for you. And they would distribute them at like lunch and they would just be on all the counters. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Who is this fucking, you know, he was always getting suspended for just being like nuts and putting out crazy writing and shit. So I didn't know him personally, but then it was one of those things where you ever have like a friend and uh, their older brother is like, you know, in the class above you or sure. whatever else. Yeah. So it was like, I moved out to LA and I had a friend from high school and his older brother was living with Mr. Girl at the time. So I kind of like ended up hanging out with all of them. And that's how we kind of became friends like years after the fact. I'm like, oh, you were that weird fucker who made those crazy fucking newsletters. He's like, yeah, that was me. Uh, look, Mr. Girl's crazy. I know this. Uh, but I would say, man, if you listen to some of his music is incredible. His like production quality is through the roof. And yet he's like, he says insane shit. There's a lot of shit where I'm like, man, I've tried to like change his mind on some shit. And he's just, you know, he's kind of nuts. He's out there, but I don't know, man. He's just a guy I know. And again, like when my dad, I always say this and, you know, maybe it's sappy and gay, but when my dad died, I was like, I don't know. I was going to fucking kill myself. I was like, I have nothing to live. If I don't have a father to like show what I'm doing to someone to impress, like I'm just kind of in the void. Uh, so I was just like miserable and Mr. Girl lived in LA at the time we hung out, you know, we went to dinner, we got coffee and he kind of like helped me get through my dad dying. So at that point, like, look, if that guy, you know, killed a bunch of women and children, I would go, fuck, that really sucks. But I'd still visit the fucker in prison. You know, it's like, it's one of these like ride or die, thick or thin kind of things where you go, I don't endorse what you do. I don't, you know, endorse the things you say. Uh, but hey man whatever hey, it, you know you're a friend so what can you do by the way on the john i see that now for some reason it didn't pop up i'll read that next i see it right now uh, i don't know why the tts is broken but I'll, I'll i'll i see it now um the thing about mr girl so i'll say i don't like him uh and i don't agree with, it's not because of the stuff he said though actually we used to have him on the show and debate of course i disagree yeah. with the stuff he said and think there's a lot of weird shit there don't get me wrong uh and he so, likes you, by the way. Really? Still? Well, I'll tell you what anytime, happened. Anytime, anytime, I'll tell you real quick. Whenever I talk to Mr. Girl and I tell him, like, what's going on in the sector or whatever, and I, I go, man, we, we always go, if this was, like, 10 years ago, Ralph would be one of the biggest radio hosts in the country, you know? I think you would have, like, a syndicated radio program, like a Rush Limbaugh kind of thing. And Max goes, I can't hate him. He's too great of an entertainer. Like, <laughs> I'm like, but he fucking hates you. And he, you know, he says horrible things. He's like, yeah, but he's just kidding what he well, does. Well, look, so. I don't actually hate him, uh, but, know, but he I big know. leagued me. I'll tell you what happened. So we were bringing him on the show, and then I guess we had a debate with Richard Spencer, and we had an agreement. He was restreaming to his channel. He was in with Destiny at the time, and he was restreaming to his channel. I was like, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. But he's like, I don't want to answer these TTS questions or have callers. And at the time, that was like a key part of the show, and it still needs to come back. My roadcaster, I won't get into that. Yeah. Um, but he's like, okay, well, I don't have to take this anymore. I'm, I'm too, he literally said, I'm big enough now. I don't have to take this anymore. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> that didn't really sit in the best way, <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, with me. And so we had a falling out over that. And, and I haven't had him back on. I mean, since, honestly, the, the same thing. He's done the same. He's a guy with like, I don't know how to put it. I don't want to say stubborn. But like we had him on, you know, I had him on Biggest Problem or whatever. And like usually the rule is you go on someone else's podcast, you know, you're there to promote or whatever else. And he's like, uh, I, yeah. why do I not get any of the Super Chat money? <laughs> I'm like, well, because it's our show. What do you mean? And he's like, well, I was the I was the guest. I, I feel like I should get half the Super Chat money. And I was like, I think we did end up giving him. It was like Dick was out. So he was like filling in for Dick. So we're like. I guess you were kind of the co-host for an episode. Sure, you can have half the super chat money or whatever else. But it is, you know, he he uh well he is Jewish, so uh <laughs> yeah, he hates when I say that. I don't know, man. Yeah, he's look, I mean, he's a guy where he he has certain like moral stances and he's like frustratingly stubborn about them. I always tell this story where at one point uh somebody got me for like a period of two days, Russia Today, you know, Russia Today, the yes, like Russian RT propaganda news. Sure. Yeah, RT, they were like, uh, do you want to be our social media? At first, I thought they were going to make me like a journalist or writing anti-American propaganda. And I was like, that sounds fun. I want to do that. Uh, but then they wanted me to be their social media guy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I go and I did that for like two days and I saved all their DMs to a screenshot folder, which I will save for a rainy day. 
Anyway, so I went to Mr. Girl and I'm like, hey, I'm going to write Russian propaganda. Like, it's, that's fu funny. And he's like, if you take that job, we can't be friends anymore. I'm like, oh, why not? It's going to be fucking hilarious. And he's like, you're going to write propaganda for the Russians? I'm like, for money, not for the Russians, for money, Max. They have a lot of money to subvert <laughs> democracy. And he's like, that is like the most holy, immoral fucking thing. And I will never talk to you again. And I'm like, God damn it, man. So he just has, you know, this weird, you know, he's like a lot of weird moral codes where he goes, oh, I don't have to do this because like he's a guy he won't. He streams on kick, but he refuses to turn on monetization. This is a poor man. He's been kicked off Patreon. And I'm always like, Max. You need to sell things. You need to take super chats, whatever else. I'm like, why? Why is monetization not enabled on Kick? And he's like, well, Kick support uh, promotes gambling to children, so it would be they immoral do. for me to make money. <laughs> yeah, but they do. Which they do. And he's right. He's right. <laughs> he's absolutely right. It is immoral to take money from Kick because you're helping promote gambling to kids. He's not wrong. No, he's not wrong but you're like, that one. Yeah, I know it's immoral, but <laughs> fuck, man, you got to make money somehow. And it drives me up a fucking wall. He's like. His moral code is just too strong. I can't break this man and convince him. Well, he's him also not wrong about Patreon play the game. because they did the same thing to me and right. they've done the same thing to many other people. Uh, and thankfully, they haven't done it to some people I know, and that's a good thing. But I, I don't wish, like, you know, I don't want other people to get the same treatment. Like, I don't sit there and, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I want friends of mine, people I like to stay on there. But they did that to me. Uh, he was right about that. But, you know, I, again, he, he kind of big league me. And then, you know, his YouTube gets deleted. He has a falling out with Destiny. It's like, well, this would have been a nice. He's in a bad space, right? Like, He's this would have been a nice space. guy to come on my show and get in some more fights with people. Like, that would have been a good thing. Anyway, I'm, I don't hate well, him, and maybe we could have him. I'm gonna say this: now. He's been kind of a. He's been like a hermit lately. And the thing with Destiny, you know, I don't want to comment too much on it, but he came to me and he said, "All these women are telling me Destiny's abusing them," and I said, "That is not your fight. Don't touch it." But again, he's like fucking. He gets this thing where he's like. If I don't stand up, you know, if women are telling me they're being abused, I have to do something or I'm a bad person. Like, that's his mindset. Everyone's like, why did he attack Destiny? And I'm like, because these crazy women came to him and convinced this extremely, you know, moral poisoned man that he was going to be their savior. They came to him individually and they said, Destiny is abusing this. And then they all, after, after Mr. Girl said, Okay, I will tell your story. They all started heaming and homming and going, oh, actually, maybe it didn't happen. Or actually, I take it back. And Mr. Girl was left fucked because he. I told him, I'm like, don't believe women. Don't believe any of them. They're, they're probably just making it up. Or if something happened, they're exaggerating it. You know, like, I have stories that he told me of shit that these girls were telling him. And I was going, Max, there's no way that's true. That woman is just lying to you. And he's like, I don't know. I kind of believe her. And I'm like, no, don't believe her. Just don't. And, but, it's, you know, he ran with it. And at the end of the day, again, a lot of these women who went, he's he's an idiot for believing these women, basically. I'm not going to say he's an idiot. Like, he believed them. And maybe some of, I don't know what's true and what's not. But it seems like it was clear that a lot of them were either exaggerating it or whatever claims they had. They didn't have any evidence to back it up. And they were going to walk it back. And he's just a guy who, if a bunch, of, again, a bunch of women came to him. Like two or three women in Destiny's community were saying, like, oh my God, it was basically this, this, and this. And he's like, Okay, I gotta I gotta do this. They're coming to me. Like it's my job. You know, I have to be the moral person here. Uh, it's the same with kick. I go, Max, just take the money. It's not your fight. You're not gonna stop gambling on the internet. No, I can't take money from kick. It's like he he's he's uh, willing to live the life of a poor philosopher for his stupid fucking beliefs. And uh, it drives me up a wall. Yeah, so yeah, it sucks that the Destiny thing like he destroyed fucked him. Himself I knew bad. it would. Yeah, he fucked himself bad. He, he had a good thing going. He was on the rise actually, and we'd already had our falling out. And I was, you know, I was like, "Damn, he's killing it." You know, you got you got to admit when somebody's killing it. And then he did that, and it was just nosedive. Uh, and well, the was, real problem was him getting banned off YouTube. Yes, if yes. he didn't get banned off YouTube, and he should not. Let's be clear. There, there's nothing that was on. He got banned for they said like sexual content and the video that they had and i forget what it is he had like a video he used to make videos and it was all like movie scenes illustrating what he was talking about and there's some movie where a guy sticks a chicken wing out the fly of his zipper so it looks like his dick <laughs> you know and a lady like i think like bites the chicken wing or something and someone reported to youtube as oh mr girl has a video with a guy getting his dick sucked <laughs> and he lost his whole channel for this one movie scene 
of a sorry of a chicken wing sticking out a guy's fly you know because he has like so many haters justifiably i understand it you know who all of them get together and a hundred of them go sex content sex content report 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 uh it's a tragedy that he's banned from everything I, I think we could get him back on here. I've told him, uh, Mr. Girl, right now you're invisible. No one knows where you are. No one knows how to find you. You have you to be what? going on stream. A you got to be talking to people. Sounds really good, Vito. I have to say. Uh, I think I think you put Mr. Girl up against somebody. I think he needs to be back in that ring. I do too. Uh, we'll figure something out. I do too. I'll and talk like to I said, him. you know, you said I hated him. I don't hate him. I just didn't take that well because I don't. He did big league. Yeah, well, I, I understand. So, that. and I, to be clear, I didn't I'm take not it endorsing well his wanted... positions either. I want to be very clear. Uh, but he was a guest on the show uh, for Blood Sports. And, yeah. you know, I had, you know, we had a decent rapport in terms of getting him on the show. And I t talked to him like I would anybody else, right? It was nice to him. And we had some decent conversations. But um, that was the the beginning of the falling out there uh and i would i would just remember yeah up. i'd say he's a guest where you're gonna have some quirks sure. that are gonna come up yeah, he's a quirky guy um i you <laughs> he's know a quirk. He, he's a i don't know it's good to have people to argue with and he's a personality and i i think that it, we had some good debates with some big crowds here on the show now a lot of the people hated him uh but it was good for him it was good for the kill stream and you know i would do it again for sure uh, all right let me read these because we're not going to keep you all night uh, maybe like five ten yeah minutes. no problem um james because i told Vito to be a certain time all right now james gardner says springtime for super killer Vito's weird and cool uh north 34 34 says please ralph don't get involved with mr girl you know he's a wrong and well look i didn't say he was a right un but he's actually been on the <laughs> show before if you look in killstream history and i don't feel like having him on to basically argue with somebody who's probably gonna call him a pedophile it's good entertainment uh, <laughs> right? yeah. like i mean that's uh we've done that before uh he de uh, debated several people uh on jerry the show. springer would have the kkk yeah, 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 all yeah. The time. right like it's it's kind of one of those things <laughs> although maybe reverse here yeah. for the kill stream <laughs> yeah. um but the yeah KKK is bringing on jerry we've yeah. actually we've actually had him on before um and and grass ninja i will talk about that uh i swear i will talk about that he wants me to talk about something but just let me finish this he says on the john says my favorite veto twitter debacle was when he was being attacked by fucking lollycons of all people wow i never knew any of those uh said who were calling veto a pedo wherein he responded with why don't you go fuck a child you pedophiles uh and then he said lml to that yeah you've been into it with a lot of people uh and i didn't understand that telling so call it saying they're like, why do you want me to fuck a child? I'm like, no, I'm saying that you're a pedophile and you would fuck a child. And that came back to haunt me, I guess. Hi, Scraps. Uh, oh, my God. My cat does that, too. Smoke jumps up there, except he weighs 14 pounds. Uh, and he jumps up there and it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even see how he does that. Um, okay, now let's see here. I think I asked him all. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any. Um, okay, I did get it on the John. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't get that um, asked a little bit sooner. Oh, wait. Okay, now that one just came in. I did read that. Okay. Um, talk about Super Killer here at the end. How's it going? When's it going to come out? I know it's got delayed. Oh, I'm aiming. That happens. Yeah, it got honestly. delayed. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, it is a little bit delayed. We're going to try and get it out uh, for summer. We're actually making really good progress. I'm very excited. Uh, but Super Killer is just a really cool, uh, dark superhero comedy about a guy who kills superheroes. Uh, there's a little more going on, but I'll let people kind of peruse that. But it's him and his sexy sidekick, kind of Rick and Morty jumping from universe to universe, having to kill the central hero of each universe. You know, one universe, they might have to fight Superman. The next universe, they got to fight Sailor Moon. The next universe, they got to kill all the kids from Pokemon. Uh, but it's, you know, it's also got like a kind of a cool background story as well. I don't know the best way to pitch it, but uh, check it out at superkiller.org. Uh, it, it is really coming together. It's looking really cool. I got a great artist out of Mexico who's just really? fucking fantastic. Yeah, I should have him come hang out with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> his a, dude, he's way too good. Uh, his art's fantastic. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I got this guy because he could be working for DC or Marvel right now. And I only have to pay him Mexican wages, which is great. No, he's getting a good chunk. <laughs> That's the other thing. People are like, oh, Vito's Vito only got a Mexican guy because they're cheap. I'm like, he's getting a point. I give him like a percentage of all the money we make. You know, everybody's always trying to find ways to attack me. He's he's very well paid. But yeah, super killer, man. Uh, it's just really cool. I'm, and we're making a lot of cool merchandise. I'm working on plush dolls this week. We got to get those made, trading cards, lunch boxes. Uh, I'm an idiot. I like little stupid toys and tchotchkes, and if I get the opportunity to make them myself, I, I will do so. So, yeah, it's going to be cool, man. 
Very cool, and I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, I'd ask him, could I, could I get a copy in Mexico? I didn't realize the artist was from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Mexico. Yeah. Too. Um, but yeah, man, I, I want to see it. And I'll I'm glad get to see you a more. copy. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. And if you want, you can hear Noel's take on it and some fucking clips online where he goes, oh, it's fucking gay. And bleh. and I'm like, all right, man, what, whatever. Uh, just hate yeah. Him. He's just a hater, man. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, uh, and it's funny coming from me, I guess, but uh, he's like a professional hater. Um, I, I don't know. I try to be. Uh, fair uh, with anybody who deserves it and uh, well he he's he's also really mad that he had a big the reason he's mad at me is because of dick he had a big yes. falling out with dick mashes and because he was mad that dick let digibro come on the show digibro is an anime reviewer who? who's also wait wait fucking... who's that Vito? who's that i don't i'm not familiar with that person. digibro is now trixie wait, the digibro? Golden wait Lit. hold on who's that Vito? wait i don't i'm kidding of course uh go <laughs> ahead right, of yes, course. yes go ahead I saw you had uh, I saw you had Riley on the show. I did. Well, I, he was on the show, and I went on his show last night, uh, and he's it was a lot of yeah. fun. Him, him, and Mint Solid. Yeah, that was fun. The sector is healing. Time heals all wounds. Uh, but yeah, I guess you know Noel was mad that Dick had Digibro on the show, and again, this has been Noel's whole thing where he's like, "You're hanging out with pedophiles, 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 pedophiles," and I'm like. I don't know, man. Did you, bro? Like, look, that lolly shit is fucking degenerate and stupid, but it's also like some fucking autistic anime kid who's just beating off the pictures in his basement. <laughs> like, if he was actually raping kids, like, I'd get it. But the fact that Dick had... Oh, and let's be clear. All those fucking, like, anime-obsessed weirdos, probably half of them are beating off to those fucking pictures. It's like, you can't throw a stick and not hit one of these anime degenerates. So the fact that Dick let uh, Digibro on the show and I think bought him lunch afterwards... And he's going, oh, well, that's the same. You're promoting pedophiles. And it's like, I don't know. I think he just had a funny guy on the show. Because you know what it is, nuts. though? It's not even the law. It's that Dick defied him, basically. If you know anything about Dick Masterson, you don't tell him what to do. Uh, and it's the same thing with me. Actually, that's why we get along so well, I think. Um, like... I've never gotten a message from him telling me what to do ever or don't do this or don't have that. And I've even had some people on that or I shouldn't have had on that, that you know, lied about him even. Right. Uh, yeah. and he's been so good to me. He never messaged me, said, you better not have so-and-so on. You better not do this or that. And I've never done the same to, to him. He's had people on this fucked with me uh, in that way. And I've never messaged him and say, Hey, you better not have that person on. Or if you have him on, we're not going to be friends anymore. Well, that's what Noel did. And basically yeah. dared him. Uh, to continue being friends with somebody or continue to associate with somebody, well, you just assured that he's going to continue to associate with them, right? You just assured that he's going to continue to be friends with them because he, he's not going to get pushed around yeah. like that. That's if you tell character. Dick not, yeah. If I told Dick not to drink bleach, <laughs> Dick, don't drink drink bleach. He'd probably drink a little bleach just to <laughs> be like, "Fuck you, I do what I want." Okay, like, yeah, it, it was the exact wrong take to take. I mean, again, I've tried to have discussions with Dick about, like, I don't think we should do this on the show anymore. And he's like, don't tell me what I can do or whatever. I'm like, all right, never mind. Do whatever you want. I don't care. You know, and he was probably right in the end. But that's the worst part about all this Internet shit is, like, the little fucking backdoor dealings, the little, like, DMs, the, uh, well, if you have him on, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. And it's like, all right, man. Well, we're all just trying to make entertainment at the end of the day. Can you, like, get your own shit in order? uh well he made fun of me yeah he made fun like sometimes i won't get into who but there's some guys who are like yeah but they're attacking me i'm like well yeah because you did a fucked up thing and now they're gonna attack you like just let it roll off you what do you want like there's always gonna be people talking shit there's always gonna be drama you can't draw battle lines and be like you can't have him on you can't have him on i'm gonna disown you and yeah null tried to pull rank he said i'm gonna send kiwi farms after you which he did. I mean, you know, uh, there's been swattings and there's like calls to people's workplaces. And I mean, Kiwi, let's let's be clear. I, I understand Kiwi Farms on some level. Like, yeah, I do want to know what Chris Chan did last week. You know, if Chris Chan did something ridiculous or has a new comic book out. Yeah, I want to read about it. But it gets to the point where like I look at my Kiwi Farms thread and they're going, here's the address of Vito's retarded stepbrother. And I'm like, what, what do you, why do you want that? What do you need from that information? My legitimately fully retarded nonverbal stepbrother on Kiwi Farms, they have his address and phone number. What, what use does that serve? Like, at what point are you typing that onto your form and you go, that's really going to piss Vito off? Well, it doesn't piss me off. I just don't get what you're getting out of it. It seems like it's just autistic data collection and obsessive cataloging for the sake of autistic data collection and retarded cataloging. 
Like, do you really want to call my my dad's ex girlfriend? They have pictures of my dad's ex girlfriend on there. My dad's been dead for five years. I'm pretty sure she has a new man in her life. If you want to really call her up and be like, "Hey, do you know about your dead boyfriend's son? What he's doing on the internet? Like, what is the point of any of this? Just." actually find funny shit and talk about funny shit i have no problem with that but it's like obsessive weird data collection and then going oh he's so blown out he's so blown out that we know where his retarded stepbrother lives yeah i'm owned i'm eternally owned congratulations guys like go nuts i, I don't know what you're getting out of this i don't either well some of them think it's like scare tactics uh right like it's like this is gonna put fear in him you know let's put his address out or his family's address out or even just for well, put out sources. all my passwords yeah. and shit. you know i have to spend a week it was it was awful my mom the same week literally the moment i was getting a, a kiwi farm thread and they're filling it of doxes of all my personal information and passwords and shit. i was picking my mom up from the airport we were supposed to spend a week together just hanging out and i'm like Hey, mom, uh, I got to spend the next two days just basically changing all my passwords and shit because a bunch of autistic kids are, are obsessively, you know, linking to every account I've ever owned and like finding old password hashes and trying to hack all my accounts. So that kind of fucked up, you know, the nice weekend I was going to spend with my mom or the nice week I was going to spend with my mom. You know, it is what it is, whatever. These guys uh, have nothing better to do. They're again, they're autistic. They're like, oh, look at all this data. Look, oh, passwords and addresses and phone numbers. And, you know, and at the end of the day, you go, oh, well, should I call my dad's, you know, girlfriend who I haven't talked to in five years and go, oh, by the way, you might get a phone call from some idiot on the Internet uh, yelling about uh, me being a pedophile. I, I don't know. Just look look forward to that, I guess. It's fucking weird, man. Uh, but again, if you guys want to go hang out yes. with my retarded stepbrother, you have his address. <laughs> OK, he'll, he'll shit in his hand and he'll rub it on you. And you guys can have fun doing that because he's legitimately super fucking retarded. But, you know, go nuts. Have fun with that. Whatever feels right. Now, let me read this real quick and then I'll, I'll let you say your farewell. Um, Clip Sama says Riley told him to leave talking about Null. I forgot about that part. Riley told him to leave in Discord and called him a dork. Null thought Dick ordered him to because he makes thumbnails. That's the thing. Riley does his own thing. Uh, me and Riley got in a fucking fist fight. In the, uh, God and everybody saw on the internet. And I never s said, oh, you got to get rid of Riley or I'm not going to be friends with you anymore because I wouldn't dare do that. Right. And he, you know, and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just uh, bizarre. Dumb people see dumb people are unable to accept that things just kind of happen like out of sequence. Yeah. Like one guy might just go, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. And dumb people need to construct this. Like it's why low IQ people are the ones who most commonly fall for conspiracy theories. If you if you interview cult members, you're going to find a lot of really low IQ people. It's why. Well, because I didn't understand, you know, why my dad died and also my cat ran away and also this. And a guy came to me and he said, all of this is an interconnecting web constructed by Xenu, the great wizard. <laughs> and then it made sense to me. OK, and it's the exact it's exactly like this is textbook shit on Kiwi Farms. Oh, Vito and Ralph and Dick and all these guys, they all have a secret group where yes. they coordinate to they make think fake Dick comic is like the books. Godfather, dude. I swear to God, they say he ordered Ralph to do this today when I went on there and defended Rakeda. They really think he's calling shots like that. Dick has never once told me to do anything on his behalf because he doesn't care. Like, and he wouldn't, he, he just doesn't. He's never said, hey, you got to go counter this narrative. Hey, you got to go sweep up whatever the fuck. Like, again, it's just stupid low iq autistic people who want the world to be a perfectly programmed computer game where everything is like a fucking if then statement if dick orders veto then this happens then they make a fake comic book then after they make the comic book they're going to say like they want to be able to predict the fucking future and they have never done it correctly never once maybe they'll get okay they've probably gotten lucky one out of a hundred times they'll be like this is what's going to happen and then it happens to go ah i see i can see through the veil i am nostradamus i know everything's going to happen but in the meantime guys it's been what five years of saying again that there's like a secret magic conspiracy with dick and ralph and uh, ricada i i have no i can't even keep track of it it's so autistic well the hilarious it's thing is, insane. is if he did ask me to do it i would do it <laughs> that's the funny thing but he never does <laughs> if he did ask me to do that shit, i would definitely do it you little fuckers but he never does that anyway um i mean if he asked me to do it it would be so out of character that right, i would I'd take it like, super wow. seriously <laughs> I'd go, oh my god okay yeah sure
if he asked me to you do know. it, I'd probably do almost anything for this guy, like literally. And so, yeah, if he did ask me to do it, I would 100% do it, but he never does. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's my piece on that. I've seen that a lot more recently, Vito, where it's like, well, Ralph got the order and he's out there running defense for Rakeda. No, actually, I'm running defense for Rakeda because it's ridiculous. Uh, and yeah, I said as much or more shit about him in it than anybody when we had our falling out. But we put that behind us. Uh, and I have sympathy for him because that same exact shit has happened to me. And so that's why I'm out running defense for Rakeda. Bro, it has they're at the point. Dick I haven't talked. I haven't talked to Nick Rakeda in probably like I think I DM'd him, what, four months ago something saying hey do you want to come on and talk about this he said i'm too busy like he did a stream because i made a video about like gina carano and how i think her lawsuit is bullshit and she's not going to win uh it's just like a stunt lawsuit from elon musk which whatever is my opinion you can think otherwise and then nick Ricada basically said the same thing that's on his show too, by the way, but yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like well that's not gonna work like you know it's good publicity but they're not gonna win that and kiwi farms goes oh uh Ricada got the call from Vito and dick <laughs> that the official the official narrative on gina carano's lawsuit i'm like why would I give a shit what Nick Ricada says about Gina Carano's lawsuit? How does that, even if he said the exact opposite of me and said I'm an idiot, that would have been honestly better entertainment. We could have debated about it. I would have gone on his show and he would have been like, this is what I think. I would have said, this is what I think. We don't get together to say, we all have to say the exact same thing. That would actually be boring. We want drama. We want to disagree. There is no official narrative. Okay? Uh it's crazy. It's just, again, and it's just crazy autistic people go, oh, two people have the same opinion? Well, the only way that possibly happened is they met for, for uh, secretly in a chat room to collude for some reason. For, for what reason? What do we gain out of agreeing on the Gina Carano lawsuit? What do, how do we benefit in any way? I wish we were that organized. <laughs> Is the other thing. I wish. I, oh I my was god! That the other day. I, I was like, I really "Damn, wish. I kind of wish this shit was true." I wish we did have a fucking chat room like that. Uh, anyway, I won't go into it. They're putting ideas in my head. <laughs> no, I'm like, we're like a lot of money if we start doing that. That sounds Maybe like a good should. idea. Yeah. <laughs> Not a terrible idea. Oh, uh, this is one more, and I swear I won't keep you long. He says, Dick Master, this is from Colonel J. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Dick Masterson is inflating his numbers on Patreon by taking out credit cards. Yeah, I remember that one too. Uh, Bro, that he's pumping up. It his makes own no sense to lose money. Uh, anyway, uh, he would ha he okay. Biggest problem we split the profits evenly. So if he's inflating our numbers, he's just giving me right. like five grand a month for free. Cool, keep doing that, Dick. Please keep taking out credit cards and inflating the numbers of the show. I'm really happy about it. Why the fuck would he do that? It's such a waste of money. It's retarded. Oh, tell him about the biggest problem in the universe as well. Before you yes, go. I was going to say, guys, please go to youtube.com slash biggest problems. Subscribe to the show. Uh, me and Dick are doing this show. The show keeps getting better and better. Uh, we're already a top 200 podcast on Patreon. The numbers keep growing. The fans are loving it. And uh, we're just having a ball. Uh, we got big plans, big plans. We want to start filming some stuff, doing some crazy skits, whatever else. So I, th I think you guys are going to see biggest problem. The star is going to rise and, and we're taking the, the Ralph Amel community along with us. You're the show right has there. really, uh, it was always good, but it's really come into its own the last, what, five or six months. Finding uh, a, a constant really, stable of yeah. retards is the best. Eric July is retarded. Maddox is retarded. Null is retarded. And just being able to go onto a street. See, that's the problem with these guys is they're trying to do shows. Like, yes, dunking on retards is hilarious. But then guys like Worski and PPP are like, can you believe Nick Ricada drinks? That's horrible. <laughs> And like, what the fuck? That's it? That's all you have? No, you have to find guys who actually, like, are retarded, and that makes good content. You guys are trying to manufacture it out of nothing, and it doesn't work. Like, at a certain point, people go, okay, I get it. Nick drinks. Like, right. what, what do you want? You're, again, you're the size of a planet, PPP. Like, you have, you're in no position to lecture anyone about, like, <laughs> ingesting too much of a substance. Or Worski! I've been off coke for 90 days, boss. I can't. I'm gonna be clean forever. I'm gonna be. You're getting off that wagon in ten. The sec. You're gonna have a fucking uh wheelbarrow of cocaine outside your house in under a month, Worski. Come on, your life's a fucking train wreck mess. You have nothing going on. You aborted your only chance at happiness, no. and you're going to dig back into the snow Literally. because that's the only place that you belong. Literally. You lasted. You you trained for months and you got knocked out after two seconds. That is the most embarrassing summary of your autistic fucking low IQ life that I could ever ask for. I'm going to win. I'm going to be a, a big fighter. I'm going to be a big fighter in the big fight. Ow! It hurts when I get punched. I'm going to go back with my fat friend and complain about alcoholic lawyers. Get a fucking light. Thanks for having me, Ralph. Vito Big Gismati. problem universe. God Thank bless. God bless you. Ralph Amel, 100%. Thank you, brother.
Ah, uh, nice sign off there. A round of applause for Vito. Nailed it. He aborted his only chance at happiness. Wow, okay. That was that was ace. That was an ace line. Alright, now Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.